Nearby Osaka, Kyoto is the most important of the ancient capitals, especially in the heart of the Japanese, who remain dearly attached to the city. Kyoto has always played a major role in protecting Japan's traditional culture and was the setting of most of the archipelago's major historical events. Such as its predecessor, Nara, the city was built using a checkered pattern modeled after the Chinese capital of the Tang Dynasty. With its numerous temples nestled in sculpted gardens, Kyoto is also a perfect reference for the Westerner whenever he imagines Japan. Early in May, Kyoto is overcome by an intense activity called the Golden Week. Here, Japanese travel and visit their families. The following week, schoolchildren take over and become acquainted with the history of their country in an area where it was largely forged. Gyumizu, the Temple of the Holy Water, is besieged by classes of students who somehow never forget to take pictures as a souvenir. Whatever their age, visitors must purify themselves at the fountain prior to entering the temple. Founded in 798, it is one of Kyoto's oldest buildings. The Hondo, or main temple, hangs suspended above the vegetation. At the foot of the Hondo, the Otawa no Taki Spring attracts everyone's attention. The water tumbles down in three separate falls. The one on the right gives intelligence, the middle one beauty, the one on the left long life. Further south of Kyoto, the Fushimi temple is devoted to Inari, the goddess of cereals and particularly of rice. She is associated with wealth and symbolized by a fox. This secretive animal with mysterious powers is the messenger of the princess. This Shinto sanctuary is especially famous for the hundreds of red torii, or gates, that line a path leading to the top of Mount Inari. In the past, the torii were built to favor plentiful rice harvests. Today, they are bought by private individuals or companies seeking good fortune. Thus, they often bear the name of their donators as well as the year they are built. It is said that more than 10,000 of them line this path. In the center of the city, the Nijo Castle was built by the Shogun Leazu in 1603. The exterior of the buildings, the decoration and the woodwork make it a perfect example of Edo architecture. The gardens around the castle are the work of Kobori Enshi, who at the time was considered as a master of gardens. Due to its surface and impressive proportions, experts have qualified it as representing the Shoin Zukuri style. Visiting the market in the Gion district is a mandatory detour for the traveler who wishes to discover the ingredients of Japanese gastronomy. Very diplomatically, the Japanese explain that there's more to their cuisine than a few pieces of sushi. Fish is often used, but countless other recipes exist to prepare it. The diversity of vegetables is also amazing. They are part of the ingredients needed for the obanzai, the name used in Kyoto for these dishes. They require long preparation and cooking times that measure up to the result. Seasoning is used in great quantities, notably of algae and mushrooms. The food is rarely very spicy or hot. The yin and yang, the sweet and salty, may nevertheless surprise a few yet novice palates. Green tea is of course served during most meals. Kyoto's green tea is slightly roasted. In the narrow streets of Gion, one tries to protect the traditional houses from pressures of real estate. The kimono has almost disappeared from daily life. 
Yet whenever they visit Kyoto, the young mainly wear it as an allusion to tradition. On the other hand, the Mayuko or geisha trainees maintain the tradition with a haughty kimono demeanor, walking to the rhythm of the getas, their wooden sandals, bearing a most neutral expression on their faces. For a long time now, Fumisono has studied all the disciplines required to become the perfect geisha, which include traditional music, dance, and the art of serving tea. During an entire year, we must train. We are not allowed to wear the geisha kimono before that. We only wear ordinary kimonos during that year of training. Fumizono is on her way to work in a famous home of Kyoto, where receptions are given in private salons. Leave the ancient imperial city and head north towards the Sea of Japan. Upon leaving Kyoto, rice fields and a wilder nature unfold in a beautiful landscape. The mountains covered with dense forests only leave little space for villages that spread in the small valleys. Nearing the mountains, the ancient village of Miyama has preserved its heritage of minkas, thatched roof houses. Time seems to have stopped here. The locals live to the rhythm of nature, far from the intensity of the large cities, although they're not that far. These traditional roofs are built with reeds and are replaced every 20 to 30 years. The facades exposed to the north are redone more frequently than the ones facing south. The reed is the miscanthus, a rhizome that reaches several meters in height and is abundant in Asia. In one of these thatched cottages, Hiroyuki Shindo perpetuates the ancient art of using indigo to dye fabric or clothes. He is also the president of Kaya, an association whose aim is to preserve the village's heritage. Indigo is extracted from a plant that's been used to make blue dye since the beginning of time. This plant grows in humid and warm regions such as southwestern Japan, especially on the island of Okinawa. More than a mere dyer, Hiroyuki is an artist. He only uses natural compounds in his activity. As he unfolds a yukata, a piece of clothing worn at home, Hiroyuki can be proud of his unique and original creation.